All right, so in this video, we're checking out the new Z's 30x30 and 20x20 stacks. Uh, these are also available as individual parts as well. So I'll link uh, as much of those as I can down in the description, separated parts versus um, complete stacks. Um, I think the, if you get the complete stacks, it's gonna be a better value. Plus you'll be guaranteed you'll get all of the parts, I think. If you just get the ESCs, things like the wiring looms only come with the flight controller, so be aware that you may not have everything you need if you just get the ESCs. So I recommend if you're going to get the flight controller, just get the matching ESC, or if you get the flight controller, you could probably use it with different ESCs if you choose, but um, I'd be best uh, to get the complete stack. Anyway, so we have the 30 by 30 here on the left, then the 20 by 20 here on the right. Um, let's look at the 30 by 30 first, and it does come with these uh, specifications here. It's an F7 flight controller with a 60 amp 400 ESC. It does come with a bunch of uh, pluggable LED strips here. And that plugs into the flight controller. It comes with uh, your hardware for mounting, wiring looms, uh, uh, wiring harnesses for your receivers, has pin connections for uh, Crossfire and the TBS Unify. Uh, I'll talk about that here in a second. It also, also comes with um, some capacitors if you wanted to add, in, uh, add some additional capacitors as well as an XD60 connector. So here's some additional specs on the back. Again, it's an F7. The flight controller does go up to 8S, but the uh, ESC only goes up to 6S. Uh, 5 volt uh, BEC up to 3 amps. MPU 6000 gyro, has 128 megabytes of onboard flash if you want to do a lot of black box recording for your PID tuning, uh, plenty of space on here. Onboard Beautiflight OSD chip, six available UARTs. It has a VTX switch, which you can control uh, the VTX uh, power on and off directly from your transmitter via Betaflight setting. LC filter on your five volt uh, regulator, USB type C connector, you know, again, are uh, a bunch of R RGB LEDs that are included for, with the flight controller. Here's some specs on the 4 one ESC, Six, up to 60 amps on the 4 one ESC, the 32-bit ESCs, and the uh, capacitor is 35 volts, 470 microfarads. Yeah, so this one, it looks like it only goes uh, 2 to 6S, I believe, on the ESCs, whereas the flight controller does go up to 8S. And here's some information on the LEDs. It's 10 RGB LEDs on each strip. So the LEDs are pretty small, but yeah, there's 10 of them on there and they're, they're all gonna be programmable. And it does say that there's a max current draw of 0.6 amps at five volts for the, each strip of LEDs. So here's a look at the 4 one EC. It's got a pretty big heat sink on here. I think it's glued on, so I'm not going to rip it off and hope to damage the EC. Uh, just to show you the MOSFETs, but um, looks like a pretty good design. Now, this company, Z, is a pretty new. Uh, they're actually based in Italy. Obviously, they do their manufacturing in China, but the, all the designs are done by a company in Italy. And these are fairly pricey stacks, but what you get is a good design overall. Um, I think it's well thought out and all it's very clean as well as you get very good documentation. So um, on the product link page, there's going to be a link to the manual for uh, the 30 by 30. The manual for the 20 by 20 isn't out yet. This is pretty new. So we'll talk about that here in a second. The 20 by 20 is really similar to the 30 by 30. So if you're wondering, the differences are basically they kind of just took the 30 by 30, shrunk it down. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But you can see the uh, this is a 32 BDC, very large solder pads here for your motor wires, and uh, they're out on the side, going to be easily accessible. And they're outside of these uh, the mounting holes, which will make them easy to switch your motors in case you crash and damage a motor. Now, motor swap should be pretty easy. So they're they're nice and big on both the top and the bottom. And here's a bunch of capacitors already here on this on the bottom here for filtering. Filtering. Got your shunt here for the current sensor. Got a bunch of pads here for your uh, motor signal wires as well as like EAC telemetry, all that stuff. And it's on both sides. And that's in case you don't want to use the uh, wiring loom. So obviously all these pads are corresponding to these. So you got voltage ground, uh, motor uh, wires one through four, and then you have your current sensor and EAC telemetry.
Nice big pads here for your XT60 connector as well as the through holes here for the capacitor. So you just uh, slide the capacitor through and then uh, when you do the soldering it'll keep the capacitor in place. So that's kind of nice and you probably want to do that on top because the bottom here is not as big. But you could uh, solder some additional stuff here to the bottom that may require battery voltage. Alright, so just the uh, ESC by itself is coming in at 22.3 grams. Okay, so we'll take a look at the flight controller now. Uh, again, 30 by 30 with the grommet holes here. Uh, as you can see, there's, a, there's this empty space here for receiver and video transmitter. It's, they kind of designed this around the Crossfire Nano and the, I think the Unify Nano. And you can use these included pins here. See, there's some pins included. If you want to wire up uh, the, the receiver kind of permanently, I would recommend not using the pins. They're not that easy to solder on and not easy to actually solder on properly. Um, even if you have really decent soldering skills, I would recommend just using very short wires. And then you can always just um, use the space here to use a little bit of VHB or something to stick the receiver on the flight controller. It'll still maintain the very low profile, but you don't have the problem of using the pins. I recommend not doing that. So if you want to use the pins, they go here on the outside, on here and here. And then if you don't want to use these pins here or the, the pads on the outside here, there's pads available on the inside here as well for your ground receiver connection and your two UART connections. So the layout of the board's uh, fairly straightforward. So all you, on top here you have your connections for your camera. So you have a five volt ground camera and VBAT and your UART connection. So for the UART connection, you can either use camera control or joystick emulation or UART control. And you can choose between the two via this um, solder bridge here and it does explain which one to use in the minute. I think it's to the left it's uh, camera control and to the right it's UART control. So for certain cameras that have UART control like the run cam cameras you want to use the UART control and solder bridge two on the right and then when you connect up your UART here to the camera you can control it via Betaflight or you can use joystick emulation if that's supported by your camera. Of course joystick emulation is a little bit uh, not as reliable so just keep that in mind. The additional UART connection up here I think this is a UART 5, 5 volts on ground, so maybe this might be good for a GPS. Uh, boot button here, bootloader button there, and then you got this connection here, or this solder bridge here for your receiver voltage, so 3.3 volts bridge to 2 on the top, or 5 volts bridge to 2 on the bottom. This is a UART 2 and 4 for your receiver crossbar, as I mentioned before. Down here is going to be your voltage selection for the video transmitter. And so you can go either the bridge of two on the right for VBAT, uh, two on the left for five volts, and that will give you the voltage here on your video transmitter. Got an extra five volts in ground here, as well as uh, five volt and buzzer for your buzzer connection here with some through holes. And you got your USB-C connector here. So yeah, I think uh, this company uses USB-C for everything, which is kind of, I think, the way to go. Um, that's, I think uh, hopefully more companies are doing that. And then you have your Betaflight OSD chip there, and let's see on the bottom, more stuff. So you got your F7 chip here. I think this here is your black box um, flash data, so it's a pretty big uh, flash storage for your black box uh, recordings. All of these plugs here are for the LEDs that I showed earlier. And then here is the wiring loom for the connector that goes to the foreign ESC. Plug that in there. Or if you don't want to use the plug, you can use the solder connections here on the side those are those are going to be pretty tough to solder but you got the skills um yeah those are available to you but i probably would just use the the connector and i think you get the rest of the stuff down here you get your gyro uh and you got your 5 volt bc on the bottom and the flight controller weighs 7.8 grams all right so let's take a look at the uh, 20 by 20 stack Got your XD60 connector here, uh, wiring looms. Uh, this one goes from the EC to the flight controller. Again, you get your pin connectors here. I have imagined they've got the same sort of idea with uh, putting the crossfire and the Unify on there. We'll look at that, look at that here, here in a second. Get your mounting hardware, extra grommets, and some screws, extra connectors. And you have your capacitors. I wonder if they're giving you two of the same. So 35 volts, 470. Yes, yeah, so they're giving you two, even though you only need one. Maybe 
if you want to have extra safety uh, safety margin, you could solder on two uh, extra capacitors. Probably doesn't hurt. And you have this wiring harness here. This is probably for the ESC if you want to go, go to some other types of flight controllers. And it looks like there's no connector on there. So I just have these servo leads and then you just cut those off and uh, use it for other flight controllers. So, okay, so let's take a look at the uh, ESC here. So 20 by 20 mounting holes, but you can see that the edges do kind of go a bit further over. So you're going to have to uh, keep that in mind in terms of uh, what kind of frame you could put it in. This might be pretty tight. Yeah, so the length is uh, 41 and a half millimeters and the width is coming in at about 34 millimeters. So you're going to want to keep that in mind for your build. But again, you know, nice big solder pads for your motor wires. Uh, going to be very easily accessible in your build to swap them out if your motors get damaged. Shunt for your current sensor, a lot of filtering capacitors on this side. Big pads for your XT60 or XT30 along with the holes for the capacitor. Wiring loom to go to your flight controller. This is a 32 DC again, 45 amps uh, bursting to 55 amps. And this is also rated 3 to 6S. It doesn't go up to 8S, 8S like the flight controller. And you have these connectors here, pads for your wires for the uh, motor signal connectors, uh, VBAT, ESC telemetry, and current sensor if you don't want to use the wiring loom. So yeah, um, people that want to solder, that's a really good option. More filtering capacitors here on the bottom as well. And it looks like they have a little bit of a coating on the bottom of the ESC. So I think this is probably some sort of conformal coating. So if you get a little bit of uh, water on the bottom, it's probably going to be okay. Um, you know, if you land in some wet grass, something like that. But it doesn't look like the top has that same coating. All right, the 400 C here weighs um, about 10.1 grams. All right, so here is a look at the uh, flight controller again. It does extend over the edges quite a bit over the 20 by 20. It does include the grommets already pre-installed, but you can see with the two on top of each other like this, you can probably still access the motor wires. You know, maybe not quite as easily with this flex controller is pretty big. So keep that in mind. You have the same situation here with the uh, areas here for your crossfire receiver and your Unify. Same situation applies as well. And again, I don't recommend using the pins. I think it's going to be a little bit pretty tough unless you're very, very skilled uh, in soldering. I'd recommend using very short wires and just using some VHB to stick the components onto these flat areas here. I think you'll have better luck with that. Plus, like later on, if you want to switch to a different receiver or a different video transmitter, that's going to be fairly easy to do with the uh, shorter wires instead of the pins. It looks like the layout of this board is pretty similar. So you have your uh, five volt ground and camera connections here for your analog camera. And I don't see the bridges for the uh, UART control versus camera control or joystick emulation. And well, that would be on this side here. So they move the uh, solder bridge to the underside here. So if you've bridged these two on the top, that'll be UR control and the two on the bottom will be joystick emulation. Got your Betaflight OSD chip here. You got your F7 chip here. This is an F722. Looks like you have uh, these LEDs are on the board itself, but then you also have the connectors for your LED strips as well. If you only uh, get those separately, these do support it. This, this didn't include that uh, in uh, like the, uh, the 30 by 30 stack. So you know to get those separately if you want to put additional ECs on or LEDs on your arms, for example. So just like the uh, 30 by 30, this does have six full UARTs. And so they're kind of all over the place here. Uh, again, I would re refer you to the manual. I'm going to link those in the description when the, when this one has come out. The manual for the 30 by 30 is already out. And they do go over the wiring of various receivers, um, like a FlySky, Spectrum, all the major receivers are, are documented in terms of how to wire them up and also how to actually show them in Betaflight as well. So, uh, so I'm not going to cover them in detail here because it's very well documented in the manual. So I'm just going to refer you to those. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and uh, they, they're going to do a better job than I am in terms of explaining it. So the uh, solder bridge for the VTX voltage is here. 
So two on the left for five volts and two on the right for VBAT. And you get your same uh, VTX connections here on the bottom. And it looks like over here for these four pads, you have UART five. So that could be something like a GPS, for example. And over here, you got your bootloader button. All right, so moving on to the bottom, Again, you get your black box chip here, uh, MP6000 gyro, your 503 amp regulator, USB-C connector here. And I think that's pretty much it. There's the solder bridges, as I mentioned over there. And then the solder bridge for your receiver connections right there, five volts for the two on the top and 3.3 volts for the two on the bottom. And then your connections for your buzzer are right there on these two bats. It's very tight and it looks like it has pretty much all the same stuff as the full size 30 by 30 just in a more compact space and uh i think the also for both the boards there's a five volt uh or for the five volt regular there's an lc filter so for the uh, video transmitter and cameras so you should get a very clean video with either one of these stacks all right so that's going to do it for this video on the 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 stacks from z's I'll have all the links to everything down in the description if you guys want to have additional information. I will definitely be putting these into some kind of future builds. Not sure exactly when, but these are high quality components and I think that they're going to perform pretty well for most situations. Um, but I'm going to put them in something in the near future, so stay tuned for those videos. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.